little smaller than most people. Is that okay? Yes, they both are okay. John O'Hara was a newspaperman before he turned to fiction, and the seeming ease with which he wrote his stories and novels must have come at that, from that facility given to reporters who write against a deadline. His output was prodigious, some 17 novels and hundreds of stories. He was a writer who made it his business to know things, and he liked to tell you what he knew. Following is an edited version of John O'Hara's Bread Alone, written in 1939. Mr. Hart was a car washer, and what colored help at the LB garage got paid was not much. It had to house, feed, and clothe all the hearts. The day before, Mr. Ginsburg, the bookkeeper who ran the shop pool, had come to him and said, well, Willie, you win the sawbuck. What are you going to do with all that dough? I'll bet you don't tell your wife about it. Well, I don't know, Mr. Ginsburg. She don't know the scores, so she don't know I win. I don't know what to do, said Mr. Hart. On the way home, Mr. Hart was a troubled man. That money belonged in the sugar bowl, but a man was entitled to a little pleasure in this life. Mr. Hart had not been to a ball game since about 15 or 20 years ago. And the dime with which he bought his ticket in the pool every week was his own money, car fare money. This was the first time he'd won. Then there was the other matter of who won it for him, the Yankees. He had had the Yankees in the pool the first time all season the Yanks made the runs that made him the winner of the $10. By the time he got home, his mind was made up. He had the next afternoon off, and by God, he was going to see the Yankees play. There was, of course, only one person to take. That was Booker, the strange boy of 13 who was Mr. Hart's only son. Booker was a quiet boy, good in school, and took after his mother. So that night after supper, he simply announced, tomorrow, me and Booker is going over to see the New York Yankees play. A friend of mine happened to give me a choice pair of tickets, so we and Booker's taken in the game. Lolly believed right away that someone had really given Mr. Hart the tickets to the game. He had handed over his pay as usual, nothing missing, and that made her believe his story. DiMaggio came to bat. Ball one. Strike one, called. Ball two. Mr. Hart wasn't watching with his heart in it. He had his eyes on DiMaggio, but it was the crack of the bat that made Mr. Hart realize that DiMaggio had taken a poke at one and the ball was in the air. Everybody around Mr. Hart stood up and tried to watch the ball. The ball hung in the air and then began to drop. Mr. Hart was judging it and he could tell it was going to drop about four rows behind him. Then it did hit the seats four rows behind the hearts, bounced high but sort of crooked, and dropped again to the road directly behind Mr. Hart and Booker. There was a scramble of men and kids, men hitting kids, and kids starting and shoving men out of the way, trying to get to the ball. Mr. Hart drew away, not wanting any trouble. And then he remembered Booker. He turned to look at Booker, and Booker was sitting hunched up, holding his arms so to protect his head and face. Where the hell's the ball? Where's the ball? Men and kids were yelling and cursing, pushing and kicking each other, but nobody could find the ball. In two minutes, the Yanks retired the side, and the ball game was over. Let's wait till the crowd gets started going, Pop, said Booker. Okay, said Mr. Hart. Hey, Pop, said Booker. Huh? Here, said Booker. What? said Mr. Hart. He looked at his son. His son reached inside his shirt, looked back of him, and then from inside of the shirt, he brought out the ball. <laughs> Present for you, said Booker. Mr. Hart looked down at it. Let me see that, he said. He did not reach for it. Booker handed it to him. Go ahead, take it. It's a present for you, said Booker. Suddenly, Mr. Hart drew back his head and laughed. I'll be. You got the ball? Sure, it's for you, said Booker. I'll be damned. Boy, some Booker. He put his arm around his son's shoulders and hugged him. Boy, some Booker, huh? You're giving it to me. Some Booker. <laughs> <laughs>